I was thinking about the unfair nature of tax. Oh, yes, I know. Tax, not the best subject in the world to talk about. And I was thinking, actually, because I read a lot of books of old times, just uh, how interesting it was that not a lot of people in the past were talking about all the different ways that they were taxed. And it dawned on me that perhaps they weren't taxed quite as madly as we are today or how unfair any of it was. I know in the long distance past, people were taxed by kings because they wanted to go to war and that was a good reason to bring it in. Um, but war, of course, is not something that uh, they say when they're coming around with their begging bowls to get you to vote for whatever party to be the government is on their list of agendas. But anyway, we are taxed left, right and centre. And, and it's funny because I was reminded of this because a friend of mine, he was uh, a bit worried. He'd been in business for a year and he said, oh, I forgot about filling in my tax return. I said, oh, OK, so I expect you got a fine, did you? He said, yeah, no, I got the fine and oh, now I'm a bit flustered about filling in the tax return. And I said, OK, well, I can help you. He said, you're a sole trader, aren't you? And I said, yes, and I've been a sole trader, so we know I know the system. <clears throat> he said, oh, great, can you help me? I said, yeah, absolutely. But first, I said, can you explain to me how the system, how they want you to do it so I know that you know how it works? He said, yeah, no, of course. So he said, um, how the system works is this. You earn your income, especially as a sole trader, and then you've got your expenses. You take your expenses from your income and then whatever's left is your profit. And I said, oh, is it? He said, well, yeah, of course it is. I said, he said, oh, I know. Of course, you have a personal allowance, certainly in this country, uh, you have a personal allowance, which you also deduct. And then that's where your profit is. And the profit is the bit that they tax you on. I said, oh, OK, is that true? Let's just go through it. What is it your business is? He said, well, I'm a window cleaner. I said, yes, OK, you're a window cleaner. So how does that work? Can you explain how the business works? And he looked at me and he thought, don't you know? And I said, well, just humour me. He said, well, OK, um, I'm a window cleaner. Somebody will come to me and say, hey, Rog, can you clean my windows? And I'll say, yes. How many windows you got? Might be a two up, two down, let's say. And um, I'll count them up and I'll say, oh, I'll charge you 20 quid. OK. And I said, is that the only person you clean the windows for? He said, well, wouldn't be much of a business if it was. So I said, you've got more people that come to you and ask you to um, clean the windows then. He said, yeah, that's, yeah, of course. And, and you get returns probably, you know. He said, yeah, because some of them say come back every other week and I'll come back and I clean their windows and they give you whatever money that you've asked for. Yeah, that's it. So, OK, so that's all the money that's coming in. Um, I suppose they call that income, do they? Yeah, that's right. What about your expenses then? Let's just have a quick look at that. He said, well, it's a new business. Uh, I didn't need very much. I need a bucket, right? OK, I can't imagine that's terribly expensive. He says, no, it's a bucket. It's only a few quid from the hardware shop. Great. OK, so you've got a bucket. Uh, presumably you've got water that you fill it in. That's not going to be terribly expensive unless, of course, you're putting in special mineral water. No, no, it's just tap water. OK, cool. That's great. Uh, what else? I've got a sponge. OK, a sponge. Um, I've got uh, some sort of chamois, which I use, and a squidgy. Everybody needs a squidgy, don't they, to make the windows look nice and shiny. OK, so I said, um, anything else? A ladder and a, and a ladder. There you go. So the ladder is probably the most expensive item out of all of that. And any sort of chemicals that you use, you know, some sort of cleaning fluids. He says, yeah, that's it. So. Does your expenses, are they more than your earnings then? He said, no, 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 not really at all. In fact, they're very, very tiny because I'll just go around and, you know, maybe drive to each house. There's not a lot of petrol, really, because I stay within the town and I clean lots and lots of windows. OK, now I understand your business <clears throat> and that's more or less it. You don't do anything else. No. Brilliant. So you turn up. You clean somebody's windows for half an hour or so and they compensate you for your time and labour with that 20 quid or whatever it is. Yes. 
and you repeat this throughout the year and at the end of the year you've made this much money you've taken the expenses that you've had like your bucket and all of that and then you've got a figure he says yeah that's my profit i said but i don't understand where is the profit he said well, what do you mean i said you haven't made a profit have you you've just been compensated for your time you've not actually made a profit from it you've just said i will turn up and get up a ladder and splash some water on a sheet of glass but you've not made a profit you've just been paid to do a service if you like you've been paid to do something you've not made a profit from it you've just been paid to do it he said yes I said, so where's the profit? He said, oh, I, the, the figure at the bottom. I said, okay, you still don't quite get it, do you? Um, they're trying to tax you on your profit, but actually they're just taxing you for turning up and helping somebody and being compensated for your time. You still don't quite get this. So I said, okay, do you sell sponges? No. Okay, do you sell buckets to your clients? No. But what about ladders? No. So you haven't gone to, I don't know, some cheap hardware store and bought a million sponges and then put a little bit of money on top of that and sold that to your clients so they can clean it themselves. He said, no, why would I want to do that? Well, if you did do that, if you've put a little bit on top of what you've paid for, you've now made a profit. You've profited from buying at this price and selling it at a higher price. That's where a profit comes in. And that's where the government are going, oh, you're making a profit, we want some of that money. But you haven't done that. You've just turned up for an hour or half an hour or an hour and a half, depending on how many windows are there, and someone's paid you whatever money it is to go and do the job. And that's it. You've not made a profit. And he started to go, oh yeah. And said, but you're about to fill in the tax return to say, I've earned this and these are my expenses. And they're going to come along and say, I'll have a cut of that. Thank you very much. I mean, that's like saying, I'll mow your lawn if you give me a dinner. He said, right. And then as you give me the dinner, before I get to eat it, let's say it's gammon and mash and peas, the government are coming in going, hang on a minute. I want some of that gammon, I want some of that mash, and I'm going to have a nice portion of peas. Have you got any gravy? Because that's effectively what's happened. It's got nothing to do with the government, has it? That meal that you've just been compensated for. The money is just that sort of medium of exchange. There is no profit. Why are the government taking money from sole traders who work like that? It's an unfair system. Just as if you worked at, I don't know, let's say Woolworths. He looked at me a bit wry then and he said, uh, you're behind the times there, Richard, because Woolworths has no longer existed. They went bankrupt. Don't you remember? I said, exactly. I know. But let's say they still exist and you go to you're working at Woolworths from nine to five. So you are effectively employed on a salary. But really, are you employed? You're standing there by the pick and mix with your plastic shovel and a kid comes up and says, can I have some sherbet lemons please and you go yes no problem son and you dig in a little load of it shove it in a little bag and then weigh it out and you go there are that's 50p thanks very much the kid runs off you do that all day long from nine to five with an hour for lunch let's say they're generous and at the end of the week you expect to be compensated to help that company that company Woolworths in this case to buy ch sweets cheaply and sell them at a bit more money. You didn't do it, the company did that. You just helped them out and they've paid you to stand there and shovel the sweets into a plastic bag or a paper bag, hopefully, and the kid goes, etc. You wanna be compensated for your time. So why are you being taxed? You're only being compensated for your time. And yet the government are coming in before you even get the money now. So it's the same thing again, before you can be served that meal for helping out, the government's already gone and I'll have some of that, thank you, because the employer, or the cook in this case, has taken a portion of your meal or your wage and gone, I'll have some of it. That doesn't seem fair to me because you've not made a profit, you've only been compensated. 
So this seems a very unfair system. And there's a lot more we could talk about. We could talk about the council tax and how just sitting in a box with a roof over their head that they want to come and say just by actually owning a box with a roof over their head, they want to now take some money. And if they don't, they'll take you to court. And if you don't pay, you could have a prison sentence. We could talk about the fact that if you had to drive to your clients every time you go somewhere and you're just being helpful to somebody, you've got to put this petrol in the money in the vehicle and they want to take the money out of it. Or the fact that you want to drive on a road, you've got to pay a, a, a tax on the road. We know we're being taxed left, right and centre for all sorts of different things. And then we could, and we, we won't get into this because I know a lot of my audience understand this already, get into the point that where does the money go? And if you're in, you've voted this government in who are supposed to be our servants, how come that they can willy nilly just go away and say, oh, by the way, we're going to give it to this bunch of people who are having a war in which men, innocent men, women and children are dying, which you never asked for, which is a sort of an act of terrorism. Let's not get into that because that's illegal. And if you're paying your tax, that's aiding and abetting. Let's not even get into that. Just the fact that there you are filling in your tax return and you're saying, I've been compensated because I've helped somebody clean their windows, that the government are wanting to take that and they're calling that that's profit when it's not profit at all. You've not profited from anybody. You've just offered to help somebody. This is why the tax service is completely rubbish and is unfair and not fit for anything and that we should be turning around and saying, hang on a minute, this is one massive great big con and I'm not putting up with any of it.